Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to take a look at one very small bit of cut content from Bloodborne, but one that has been a mystery to fans for so long I figured it did deserve its own, albeit short, video. But do stick around to the end as I'll have one other little bonus bit of cut content for you to see you off. With that said, let's take a look at the door at the end of the Great Bridge. So here we see this door as it appears in the final game. There's no way to interact with it, no prompt or anything at all. And throughout the game, this door never opens, no matter what we do. So let's just quickly take a look at what is literally behind this door. As you can see, there's nothing of use back here, just a completely empty area with parts of the Great Bridge and surrounding areas colliding through it haphazardly. You can't interact with the door from the other side either. Let's also take a quick look behind the gate here as well, but as you could already see from the other side, we just have more messy assets here and no actual unique areas back here. However, very strangely, there is a lever floating down below this area. There's no way to actually walk down there as it's literally floating in space, but if I carefully lower myself down to it, I can pull the lever despite it being invisible once I get down to its level. It makes a lot of noise, but otherwise it does nothing. Now many of you likely already know, but if we head into Cathedral Ward and down below the plaza, we come to a room full of incense burners. This room is literally called, internally, Former Shortcut Room. This serves to confirm something many fans have already assumed, and that is that this door, which cannot be opened, is actually the other side of the door on the Great Bridge. Once again, if we pass through this door, we find that not only is there nothing on the other side, but the door itself is not actually a door object, it's just a picture of a door on the wall which cannot be edited, removed or forced open at all, no matter how we hack the game. It is literally just a picture of a door drawn on the wall, which is why it has no back side. Another interesting bit of trivia, if we quit the game while standing in this room then reload, as we leave the room, we are introduced to Cathedral Ward, further showing that this room was once a path between Central Yarnum and Cathedral Ward. Just to further demonstrate how the Great Bridge Door and the door in the former Shortcut Room connect, let's fly out over the edge of the plaza and as you can see, it lines up perfectly. And we can even see the item chest glitching through the geometry near the door. So unfortunately, in the end, even if we could force these doors open, there would be nothing on the other side in the final game. But what if we go back to the Bloodborne Alpha demo that was shown at Tokyo Game Show in 2014? Let me just say that I love how you can see the Cleric Beast's shadow on the ground here. In the alpha demo of Bloodborne, this door actually has a prompt saying that it cannot be opened from this side. So, we head to the former shortcut room in Cathedral Ward to check it out from here. 
The way the hunter's shadow is visible on these incense burners really helps you appreciate how amazing the lighting was back in the alpha demo. There's no chest at the end of the hallway like there would be in the final game. Also, unlike the final game, the door here is literally a door, rather than just a picture of one. And we can simply open it from here. Unfortunately, the developers have placed an invisible barrier at the door just for the demo to stop players finding ways to glitch through it. But as you can see, the Great Bridge loads correctly on the other side. Even though we can't literally pass through the doorway, it's great to see for the first time this door actually open and showing the complete shortcut design as it was once intended to appear in the game. After opening the door, if we return to the other side, we still can't pass through. For now, that's about all there is left to discover about this door, I think. In the final game, even if we delete or force the door open, Cathedral Ward will never load. And the opposite side on Cathedral Ward doesn't even have a functional door at all. All we're left with is what we can discover in the game's alpha demo. With that being the case, I'm going to leave it here for now, but I am going to leave you with one more bit of cut content from the alpha demo. A bit of music called False God Hymn. This song is also in the final game, but it's dramatically different, being sung entirely in Latin, and it's called Hail the Nightmare on the official soundtrack. This version of the song is complete nonsense, and seems mostly synthesized. It's a song intended to accompany Amygdala in some way. With that said, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, do take a moment to hit the subscribe button, and please check the links in the description for more information about how to follow and support my work here. Either way, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.